Paul Kane was the first non-Indigenous professional artist to travel from Toronto West uh, to witness and record. He was commissioned also additionally by the Canadian government to produce a whole series of paintings of his travels. As a result, many of Kane's masterpieces are found today in museums across Canada and abroad. Ethel fully appreciates how important and rare this painting by Paul Kane is. And we've enjoyed every moment of sharing this painting with passionate collectors. Paul Kane was a Canadian artist who lived in the beginning of the 19th century to the mid 19th century. His professional career that dealt with the North American indigenous people, which this painting relates to, it was in the 1840s and 1850s. So Paul Kane undertook two journeys, and during those two journeys, his enterprise was to travel throughout Canada and the western part of the United States, sketch using pencil on paper, watercolor on paper, and oil on paper, record the indigenous peoples and the landscape, because he is also a landscape artist. It was a witness record, it was a participant observation, which grounds his art in authenticity, I would suggest. During spring and summer of 1845, he traveled through the Great Lakes, came back, over the winter received the support of the Hudson's Bay Company, and then in the spring of 1846, through to the very late fall of 1848, he traveled. And he traveled by horseback, canoe, snowshoe, walking, and largely following the Hudson's Bay Company routes and largely funded by the Hudson's Bay Company as well. Oftentimes, if he was spending some time at a Hudson's Bay Company post, he may be there for a month or so, and he would work up his sketches there. Perhaps he might go from an initial graphite on paper to a watercolor, and then a watercolor to an oil. So you can actually see the progression of his thinking, which when you, when you get back to his studio, is then rendered in oil. So when Paul Kane arrived back in Toronto and started his studio art, he had the desire to develop a cycle of 100 oil paintings. That cycle of 100 oil paintings is intact and is currently at the Royal Ontario Museum. He also did another cycle of paintings for the Canadian government. That collection is in the National Gallery of Canada. His sketches are at the Royal Ontario Museum and another large collection is the Stark Museum of Art in Texas. There's another group of, collect of uh, paintings that he did for Sir George Simpson, the governor of the Hudson's Bay Company that are in the Art Gallery of Ontario. One of the reasons Paul Kane is significant is because a high percentage of his art are in public institutions and available for research for scholars. In this particular painting, Paul Kane has given the the background, the clouds, and the landscape, a sublime view, but in the foreground, he's created the action of the two Assiniboine hunters hunting the buffalo. And what's interesting is the foreground hunter is on a white horse against the more somber, subdued tones of the background, which kind of brings out the action, gives it prominence. And here also is the important point of this particular painting, is that Paul Kane includes the artifacts, a number of the artifacts that he collected during his travels. For instance, the head stall on the horse, the pad saddle, the Blackfoot leggings on the foreground hunter, as well as the shirts and the crouper on the horse. These are all details from artifacts that Kane had in his studio. Here's an example of Kane witnessing an event. He tells us he witnessed the event using his artifacts as detail, but then rendering the subject in an exemplary manner.